for your students to correct whatever misconceptions that they have for choosing, let's say, <laughs> And then you can change the points. You can see here, I put three points. That could be changed if you want to five points. It, call, it could also allow multiple answers. Let's say a set of uh, choices could have two or more responses that are acceptable and so on. Okay, So that's uh, very good. Uh, Google Form also does that. But there are features that, I, that we like in MS Form that could not be seen there in Google Form. And I'll show you later uh, one example. By the way, uh, before I move on to that uh let me just check all right so we'll just show you i think uh okay let's just click one here just to just to illustrate why uh ms form is good for this purpose if we want to be very inclusive in the way uh, we design our tool, then uh, this is a very good uh, example of making our tool inclusive. So if you click on preview, so this is an example. Uh, there is this icon here for immersive reader. If you click that, you could hear some. So if the students prefer, for example, listening to instructions or uh, listening to the teacher or to a voice, then this is possible. Let me know. If, Development um, and evaluation of a teacher sound. assessment literacy inventory. Can you hear something, teachers? Did you hear a sound? When I click the immersive reader, kindly confirm. Yes. Inventory. Yes, ma'am. Group one. Yes, all right. All right. Three. This instrument was prepared to develop a measure of the assessment literacy of teachers to a basis in determining their area of strengths and weaknesses. I can change the voice to weaknesses. female. Okay, so if you want Development voice, and evaluation of a teacher assessment literacy inventory. All right. If you want to speed up, so you can increase the speed. Okay. Group one. Three. This instrument was prepared to develop a All measure... Right. You can also make it slower if you find it very fast. A measure of the assessment literacy of teachers to have basis so in determining okay. their area of strengths and we Okay, and that is automatic in every part that you see a text. So you click that. So it, it's also available and in every part. So let's have one more so you could see the beauty of it. One, I give my consent to be part of the right. survey. So there is that automatic uh, integration, uh, which they call it immersive uh, reader. And that is another feature of MS Form that uh, we could probably not see in Google Form. That's why uh, we want you to see the, uh, the beauty of this. As I know, as we know, uh, DepEd um, has Office 365. I think all teachers have access to this. Okay, so let us continue. Uh, what else did we do? So after the, the discussion on the framework of Solo, we also um, want you to know the profile of our respondents. So these are our respondents. There is one, uh, parang konti lang naman. We, we gave this to 304 teachers. May napuntang, napunta ito sa isang private uh, teacher no? in a private school. And all grade, all age levels no? represented. All grade levels represented. As you can see, all subject areas represented. Not only those teaching in mathematics, uh, English, and uh, science. Uh, which means to say that the tally could be used uh, to all teachers, regardless of, of their grade levels or subject areas that they handle. You know? And whatever um, edu is their uh, educational attainment. And so with their years in the teaching profession. And so with their community type, whether they teach in the highly urban, urban, partially urban, or rural, that's possible. And um, well, just some information about 
them no um the number of hours of training that they had in the last uh, three years uh, focusing on assessment so you could see some uh, had trainings others none resources that they had at home uh, for assessing learning I think uh, you could see also uh, richness somehow in their resources a uh, 75% of them can access multiple resources at home for assessment which is good uh, in terms of their level of confidence in designing or developing online assessments so you could see their their agreement that uh, they are confident in doing this and um, and in administering assessment okay uh, we as I said we subjected this to um, item analysis and we use item response theory which was done by Dr. Carlo Magno you'll meet him um, as our third speaker and we did this to determine person and item reliability the item difficulties the item feed feed of the response categories because we use solo here we also look at the category threshold of the responses for each item using the solo so we we ensure no, uh, that um, the items and the, their choices here are fit for the purpose. So that's it um, for the design of Tali. I will now turn you over to our next speaker, Dr. Um, Adonis David, who will explain each of the items in the Tali. And there are 25 items that he will explain. Uh, thank you, uh, everyone. Dr. David, please take over. Thank you. Those uh, who are with us in the Zoom room, kindly uh, type in your questions uh, for the session that I delivered and keep on doing that uh, as you listen to each of the presentations of the three of us here. And then we will address all these questions uh, towards the end of the session. We allotted 15 minutes for that uh, person on Q&A. Thank you. Dr. David? Yes, yes thank you. Is the PowerPoint visible now? Yes, yes. I could see it, Dr. David. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, so thank you, Dr. Marilyn, for uh, uh, your discussing no, the first part of our module. For my part, I'll be specifically discussing the teacher assessment literacy inventory items, which we use for the pre-training survey of teachers' assessment competencies, uh, those who are part of the professional development program on assessment and emerging literacies with focus on PISA. As we move along, uh, those who took the test, the assessment literacy inventory, uh, kindly also have with you your individual results if you already have it with you. Uh, for those teachers who are watching right now live, but uh, were not part uh, or are not part of the professional development program or part of the program but did not uh, take the test, uh, uh, you may want still to, to look no, uh, on the items that we will review because they will be also very helpful as we try to understand assessment competencies and assessment literacy. So I'm done and I'll be your second speaker for this module. So as mentioned by Dr. Balagtas, uh, the assessment literacy inventory covered seven major competencies and competency one uh, covering items one to four refers to teachers being skilled in using assessment methods appropriate for instructional decisions. Item one, uh, I will read the item stem. A junior high school teacher wishes to assess her student's understanding of a specific problem-solving method she had been teaching. Which assessment strategy will be the most valid to do given the intention of a classroom assessment. Option A, select a standardized test that provides a score on problem-solving skills. Option B, select a textbook that is a teacher's guide with a test on problem-solving developed by the authors. Option C, select an instrument that measures students' attitude towards problem-solving. And option D, design an assessment consistent with an outline of what the teacher has actually taught in the class. So there are four options. And of course, the correct answer is option B. Design an assessment consistent 
without outline of what the teachers already taught in the class. So as you notice, um, while it's reasonable to actually make use of standardized tests, as mentioned in option A, as well as make use of a tool no, that may have been provided by a teacher's guide in a textbook, as well as uh, an instrument that measures attitude towards problem solving, still, since we're talking about classroom assessment and problem solving method that is supposed to be taught in the classroom, then it's better that we will actually give a teacher-made test developed specifically by the teacher who taught the lesson on specific problem solving method. So it's actually the more suitable assessment strategy compared to using a standardized test or that from a teacher's guide coming from a textbook. And option C, of course, uh, while it's helpful as an additional assessment, uh, it's measuring attitude only and not the problem solving uh, learning that we want to know with our students who took that content in our class. Looking at the results for item one, based on 13,000, no? uh, more than 13,000 teachers who took the assessment literacy inventory. So some of you are watching now, no? or maybe uh, who took that, uh, this particular test. No? Um, when we, uh, if I'm not mistaken, this, this data is coming from uh, until 12 noon no? uh, yesterday. Uh, so if you took the test no? uh, on or before 12 noon yesterday, then you are part of this data. Okay? So out of 13,000, over 13,000 teachers, Okay, uh, well, not 100%, no, but still a good result. No? More than half of the teachers who took that, this particular item actually answered the item correctly. Okay, uh, option D, designing an assessment no? or basically developing a teacher-made test uh, to be used in order to assess problem-solving uh, skills. Okay, if you look at the other options, it seems that option A, selecting a standardized test is the second most answered uh, option. No? As mentioned, this is also a plausible strategy in assessing problem solving. But since we, what we want is to actually determine the learning, the understanding of our students in our classroom, then it's better to actually make use of a teacher-made test developed by the teacher themselves, no? uh, rather than using an already developed standardized test, which could be using a different set of standards or competencies or content uh, that's different from what have been taught by the teacher in the classroom. So a teacher made test is the most salamat. At kung ikaw ay interesado ng mga bijong tulad nito, mangyaring suportahan ang channel na ito sa pamamagitan ng pagpindot ng like, pag-share ng mga video at kung bago ka pa lang sa channel na ito, please subscribe sa channel na ito at pindutin ang notification bell at piliin ang all upang maabisuhan ka para sa mga paparating pang mga videos.